Nothing bad is going to happen to me here, as menacing as this place might look. The island, the ooze, those sea creatures. They're just defending themselves, like a wild animal against an unknown threat. That's how they perceived the expedition, like a threat. But I, on the other hand, I wasn't a threat. And I definitely wasn't unknown, was I? They seemed to recognize me, as if I was one of their own. Everything seems so distant now, as if I first stepped on that white beach thousands of years ago. A full moon? It can't be. Yesterday was... Yesterday was a new moon. Did I lose track of time, or...? Maybe this place isn't subject to the laws of physics. That's the only explanation I can find for this surreal night. It's hard to believe everything is real. Maybe it isn't. Maybe I'll open my eyes sometime and I'll be back in our home in Englewood and... Everything will be as before. My perfectly ordinary life with Harry. My daily routines. My illness. That will be as before, too. And then I'll need to shake off this strange feeling that I have now. The feeling that I don't really belong there anymore. And with there, I don't mean Englewood. Boston, or Newburyport. I mean... <sighs> How is it possible that the strange events of only two days on this island makes more sense to me than the life that I've been living for years? Sanctuary. So is this where you went, Harry? Was this your last stop? My God. This syringe has traces of black ooze. What the hell were you thinking? Black ooze on a Petri dish. There are drops of dried blood inside this altar. Another camp, although it's little more than a few things scattered about. My dear old pal, I never should have trusted Cass. I thought she cared about you, but she's just mad, obsessed with this place. I can't trust her to help me overcome the last obstacle. This door. I know how to open it, but what I have to do is mix my blood with the black ooze. Am I mad for even considering that? It's the only way we can be together. It has to work, right? All this can't be a coincidence. The ritual is made for the two of us, isn't it, Nora? I wish you could be here to... Damn it. I, th I have to think it over. I can't. I... Uh, t tomorrow Leave it for tomorrow, damn it. Stop writing. What are you saying, Harry? Don't you see what the Black Ooze does, what it did to the Doctor? Are you out of your mind? A library? What are you talking about, Harry?
It was the blood of these creatures. Some sort of catalyst. Heavens, this dagger looks exactly like the one I have. So I... I have to put my hand inside? Moby Dick. Its pages are hollowed out, and its shape is... <gasps> Harry asleep in his tent. What a creepy photograph. Oh my, she sounds completely out of her mind. A camera. It must be Cassandra's. Let's give it a try. Ouch! Oh! Ah. What was that? Looks like a tattoo, but... It isn't. Those are my spots. They've moved. I really hope this works. Oh my goodness, and the gun barrel is empty. woman's earring stained with blood. My God, Harry, what did you do to her? If he's behind that door, I wonder which Harry I'll find. How much would be left of the man I love? And how much of the man who has lost his sanity in this place? Hmm, an eye and a star. Look at the stars, maybe. The stars are aligned, forming a constellation that I don't recognize. That is not the same sky you can see from Earth. And if that's not the Earth sky, where am I now? All these papers are riddled with incoherent doodles. Hmm, I wonder what this means. Those stone statues seem to rotate with this switch. Hmm, I wonder what this means. They carried these people here to test them. Like a challenge of some sort.
Where is this door leading me? Shining constellation. I better draw it. Pentagon shaped symbol with channels in its edges. What was it used for? Circular stones with strange carved symbols. These icons on the wheel are the same as the constellations I have on my hand. them to a, a throne room. That was the final step in the ritual. What an odd structure, riddled with nooks and crannies and endless stairways. Maybe it only hurts the first time. Ah! The second also hurts. This place is like a labyrinth.
Mary seems to be on the brink of madness. But I, I don't feel the slightest hint of confusion. On the contrary, I feel my mind is more focused than ever. Oh, come on. One more time. Another one of those gates. I have to get into the water again. Seriously? Ow! That hurt! Again! constellation I need to open the throne room. I think I can feel the agony of the slaves, their suffering, and the effects of their transformation. It's horrifying. Black and white figures. Doggies, or dragons, whatever you are.
Come on. One more time. Sanctuary is open. It's time to find out what's waiting for me inside. There's something written on the floor. So. Haven't I heard that word in, in my dreams? What a disturbing mirror. Is it made of black icon? I, I feel like it is speaking to me. Oh, heavens! My God. here appears to respect the most basic rules of physics. However, as strange as it may be, it does maintain a peculiar harmony. Like the workings of a clock, Music box. Harry, is that you? wasn't going to work. That's... That's why you never sat on the throne. You didn't even perform the ritual, did you, Harry? But you wanted me to think that you had. You even left a lure to confuse me. But why? really happened. The only person with you in that sanctuary beach was Cassandra. So if you didn't die, it had to be her. Did she use the dagger to open the gates and carry out the ritual? You tried to stop her, but it was too late. 
She shot you with your own gun and left you for dead, didn't she, Harry? Because Cassandra was ambitious and would stop at nothing to uncover the secrets here. The island fueled that hunger for knowledge. Doubts about whether the ritual would work. But what happened to Cassandra cleared up those doubts. The ritual wasn't for people like you. The ritual was only for people like me. But you refused to believe it until the island itself spoke directly to you. Ha ha, Falgarfen. She is our daughter. That's when you finally understood. You understood what my fate would be if I didn't come here and carry out the ritual. A slow and painful death. So you faked your own demise and left your glasses near Cassandra's corpse. The same glasses you never take off. And you sent me the package from Dignity, Harry. Your picture, the key, the dagger. Another one of your scavenger hunts. And I took the bait. You made me come to this island. The same island where you almost lost your mind and your life. The same island where four members of your expedition perished. Why did you deceive me, Harry? You said you would never lie to me. Why didn't you tell me the truth? Why did you do this to me? Because you knew that I would never accept my fate if it meant leaving you. Right, my love? Not even if staying with you would mean a slow and painful death. So the only way to get me to leave you was to make me believe you were dead. And you chose to live a life without me, so I could be who I really am. That's why you tried to deceive me. But I know you too well, my dear old pal. We've had so many years together, so many moments of love, happiness, understanding, friendship. Oh, beautiful. I know what you tried to do, but I can't let you make this decision for me, Harry. Either I embrace my fate and accept what I've always been, and leave you behind. Or I reject it, and return home with you to relish the time that my illness gives us. It's my decision to make. We had a really good life. But that's not my life anymore, is it, Harry? Not after what I've been through on this island. Not after all I've found out about myself. I can't fool myself anymore. I have to accept what I truly am and leave you behind. I'm going back home. A lovely melody. I don't believe I've ever heard more than a few notes. Until now. For years I thought I was sick. But the truth is, I was homesick. My poor health, the pain, the suffering. It was all because of how far I was from here. 
Everything seems so far away now. No trace of pain, no trace of sickness. Nothing besides this place. It's so pleasant to forget everything else. Nothing matters anymore. I'm finally one of the thousands of minds connected to the i -Corps. Connected with the Elder God. Okay, are you ready? <laughs> yes, I'm ready. One, two, don't forget the harmony. One, two, three. All my life is empty. Many years later. Since I went to... I still doubt whether I did the right thing. In the end, it didn't matter. You returned home and forgave my deception. We moved close to the sea, and had a few more good years, didn't we? Until you left me, at one sunny March morning. I wish I could be reunited with you. But fate has punished me with a long and sorrowful life, with no other incentive than my work. Because that is the only thing I have now. My dear old pal. You were right about one thing, Harry. I would never accept my fate if it meant leaving you. I know who I really am and where I belong. I know fate has eternal life in store for me, but an eternal life without you is worthless, meaningless. So I choose the slow and painful death. I'm going back home. You staged this ruse because you love me. But true love is reciprocal. So I'm also making this decision because I love you. Our love is greater than fate, lineage, or, or all the pain I can suffer. Whatever time we have left, we'll spend together. When the time comes, it will be your hand that holds mine. And those beautiful blue eyes will be the last thing I see before I leave.
So, you didn't find your husband on that island, Mrs. Everhart? I did find my husband. He wasn't on the island, though. But what have you been doing these three days? What did you find then? I don't know. The truth about myself, I suppose. And at the same time, the reason to go back home. I don't think I follow you. Have you ever been in love, Captain Hodgson? In love? You mean like in a romance novel? No, that's fiction, Captain. In real life, true love stories don't end with a wedding. They end with a funeral. And the only thing that eases that final moment of heartbreaking sadness are all the good memories lived together. Honestly, I don't think I've ever felt anything like that, Mrs. Everhart. But if you love your husband that much, he's certainly a lucky man. We are both lucky. Okay, are you ready? <laughs> yes, I'm ready. One, two, don't forget the harmony. One, two, three. All my life is empty since I went away. Skies don't seem to be so clear. May some angel sentry guard you while I stray, and fate be kind to join us some sweet day. Oh, how Even today, so many years later, I still doubt whether I did the right thing. I lied to you for the first and last time. And even if it was to free you from pain, suffering, and death, I deceived you. But I've paid such a high price for my deceit, Nora. Fate has punished me with a long and sorrowful with no other incentive than my work. Because that is the only thing I have now, my dear old pal.